algebra graphing quadratics. So um, we are all about graphing the functions um, that make parabolas, and that's what we're going to learn about in this video. So the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. It is a smooth curve that has an absolute maximum or minimum value called its vertex. We're going to be referring to those vocab words often, so you need to know what they are. Let me point out the difference between an absolute max versus an absolute min. So if the parabola opens upward, we have a vertex, which is a minimum point. But if we have a parabola that opens downward, our vertex will be a maximum value. So the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. It's a smooth curve that has an absolute max or min, and that point is called the vertex. We're going to see how we can find those in this video. So we're going to start with this function. Let's graph y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now remember, y and f of x are interchangeable, so I'm going to use them um, often interchangeably so you'll get used to seeing seeing both of them. So y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. So let's take what we already know what to do with x squared plus 4x plus 3. This is a very simple quadratic expression and we can easily factor this. So let's do that. y equals, so let's see, factors of 3, positive 3, that will add up to 4 are 1 and 3. So x plus 1 and x plus 3. These are very simple factors. Now, we've done a lot of work with xy charts. So let's use them right here. This is a great time to use an xy chart. But let's don't just make guesses. Let's continue to rely on the information that we already know in order to plot some points here. Now, what we already know is this. If we are to replace that y with 0, we can easily solve this equation using the zero product property. And we can do that by factoring and then setting each factor equal to zero. So if we set x plus one equal to zero, we see that x equals negative one. So think about what that means. When y is equal to zero, notice I've replaced the y with zero, x equals negative one. This reflects a point, and if I put in negative 1 into the xy chart, and I can take that negative 1, I can plug it in right there. I'm going to get negative 1 plus 1 times negative 1 plus 3. That is 0 times 2, which of course is 0. Um, I'll get the same thing if I plug it back into the original given equation. Um, 1 squared, excuse me, Yes, negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So 1 plus negative 4 would be negative 3. Plus 3 would be 0. I get 0 no matter where I plug in negative 1. Let's also take the x plus 3 and set it equal to 0. Minus 3, minus 3, x equals negative 3. Same thing happens here. If I plug in negative 3 into the xy chart and plug it in for my x values, I end up with negative 3 plus 1 times negative 3 plus 3. This is just exemplifying the property, zero product property here. This is negative 2 times 0, which is 0. So no matter where I plug in these particular x values, I'm going to get 0 
those represent the x-intercepts of the graph, also known as the zeros of the graph. So whenever you hear the word zeros, you know that we're talking about where the graph is going to cross the x-axis. Zeros and x-intercepts mean exactly the same thing. So let's plot those two points. Back zero, or excuse me, back negative one, up zero. So here's a point at negative one, zero. Next, negative three, zero. Negative three, zero. So those are our two x-intercepts. So um, we would like some more points because as we've already seen in, um, other, in our first activity, um, we know that we're trying to make a parabola here. And a parabola is a smooth curve that has a maximum value or a minimum value called a vertex. We need to find that. Well, here's something else that we know. We know that parabolas are symmetrical. So here's what's so great about knowing these two zeros or x-intercepts. Here's what else I also know. I know that there is an axis of symmetry running through this parabola. Axis of symmetry is just a vertical line that's cutting it in half. So here's what we can do with that axis of symmetry. Since our axis of symmetry runs through negative 2, let's plug in negative 2. And negative 2 is either going to give us our maximum value or our minimum value. Let's find out. I'm going to plug in negative 2 into the function for x in both of those spots. So negative 2 plus 1, negative 2 plus 3, that is negative 1 times 1, that's negative 1. So back to down 1. That's our third point. Now, it's looking like we have a minimum value, and we do. This parabola is going to open up. We're going to see what contributes to the opening upwards or opening downwards as we continue in this video. So we can plot another point easily by finding the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is the easiest thing to spot in the original given function. And as we learned back when we were graphing lines, if we want to know the y-intercept, we need to let x be equal to 0. And if we let x be equal to 0, we can plug it in the original equation most easily. Consider the original equation with x equaling 0. It turns into, and I'm going to be right here, 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 3. When we plug in a zero into the original given equation, it knocks out every term that has an x in it, leaving only the constant, three. So let's graph this point, over zero, up three. Now, think about the definition of symmetry. And if our graph is truly symmetrical, if there is a point two units to the right of the x-axis, there must be a point two units to the left of the x-axis. So if we plug in negative four, we should also get three. Now, plugging in anything but zero into the original function is a little more difficult. Let's plug in negative four into the factored form of the equation. That will be right down here. So that's going to be negative 4 plus 1 times negative 4 plus 3. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. So yes, indeed, we verified that we do get 3. Now, I have 5 points, and I want to see 5 points points every single time that you draw a parabola. And when we finally draw in our smooth open curve, 
It is a curve. It is not jagged. It is not pointy. Nice and smooth, passing through all of those points. That is our parabola. So let's answer these two questions, which I'll be asking at the end of each graph. Where does the graph intercept the x-axis? It intercepts the x-axis at the zeros. And those zeros are negative 1, 0, and negative 3, 0. Those are the x-intercepts. Where is the vertex? Since this parabola opens up, the vertex is the lowest minimum point. And when we describe where something is on the graph, we give it in terms of x comma y because it is a location. And the location of the vertex is negative 2, negative 1. That is the first graph. We'll move a little faster with this second one. So here we are with y equals negative x squared minus 4x minus 4. So let's take a good look um, because this particular function is a little bit different, mostly because it has the negative up front. And let's kind of attack it the same way we did the other one. So let's rewrite it in factored form. And I'm going to put in that f of x, like I told you. Remember, y and f of x, they mean exactly the same thing. They're just a different notation, and I want you to get used to seeing them. So the first thing I'm going to do, and it's what we talked about in the previous chapter, whenever we see a negative up front, let's factor out a negative. In this case, let's take out a negative 1. When we take out a negative 1, we're going to be left with positive x squared because negative 1 divided by negative 1 leaves a positive 1. Negative 4 divided by a negative 1 leaves plus 4x. And negative 4 divided by negative 1 leaves plus 4. Let's keep going and let's factor this trinomial. So f of x equals, and remember, leave your greatest common factor just sitting out front. It's one of our factors. Don't lose it. So factors of 4 that add up to 4 are plus 2 and plus 2. So these factors are especially interesting in that they are the same. So let's think about it. If we set each factor equal to 0, so here's a tip. If you get an integral factor, and that's what that negative one is called, an integral factor, you don't need to set it equal to anything because it's just negative one. It's an integral factor because it is an integer. It isn't going to yield any zeros. But both of these factors we can set equal to zero. And when we do, we see that we get the same thing. Well, this tells us something. This tells me that the vertex is on the x-axis. Because I get x equals negative 2, x equals negative 2. So this is what we call a repetitive root, a repetitive root of negative 2. So if we start thinking about our x, y chart here, Obviously, if I put in negative 2, and I can put it in here, so negative 1 times negative 2 plus 2 times negative 2 plus 2, that's negative 1 times 0 times 0, which is 0. I'm going to get the same thing if I plug it in again, so there's no need to do that. So that's telling me that this is my vertex. So back negative 2, up 0. This is going to be my vertex, which means i got to work a little harder on this problem. I need to work a little harder because if I've only got one zero, I'm going to have to generate more values on my own rather than just relying on the zeros. Now what I do know is that my axis of symmetry is going to be cutting through that 
x-intercept, which is the same thing as the vertex in this situation. So let's think about this. Um, let's go after our y-intercept. Remember, if we want our y-intercept, we need to let x equal 0. And we learned in the last problem that plugging in y equals 0 is the easiest possible thing. Or excuse me, not y equals 0, x equals 0. Plugging in x equals 0 is the easiest possible thing right into the original equation because it's going to knock out that term and that one. So it ends up looking like this. The opposite of 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 4 which basically that's zero and that's zero and the constant is all that remains when we plug in zero. So that's given us another point over zero down four. Remember what we said in the last video because parabolas are symmetrical if there is a point two units to the right there will be one two units to the left. So far we've got three points. So we need to plug in one more value. Now let's take a look at something that's just crazy. What would we get if we plugged in x equals 5? If we plug in x equals 5 and you can plug it in here or you can plug it in here and honestly this is the easiest place once it's factored. So let's plug in a positive 5 and see what happens. Negative 1 and then 5 plus 2 times 5 plus 2. That is negative 1 times 7 times 7. That's negative 49. Is this point going to fit on our very limited graph? No, it's not. So even though x is in the possible domain of the function, the range value of negative 49 is not going to fit on our graph. So it doesn't make any sense to plug in 5 or negative 5. What would make sense is to plug in some x values that are close to our vertex. So instead of plugging in a negative 8 or a negative 6 or a 5 or an 8 or a 9, let's plug in a negative 1 and that's going to generate a value that we can use. So let x equal negative 1. I'm going to plug it into the function right there and right there. So that's going to be negative 1 times negative 1 plus 2 times negative 1 plus 2. So that gives us negative 1 times 1 times 1. And negative 1 times 1 times 1 is negative 1. So we have a point at negative 1, negative 1. And since our parabola is symmetrical, if there's a point one unit to the right of the axis of symmetry, there's one, one unit to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Now we have five points plotted, and that's the minimum number of plot points that I want you to plot in order to have a relatively precise parabola. So this parabola is different than the others that we've seen in that it opens downward and it's opening downward for this reason it's opening downward because of this negative one remember this negative one has a name yes it is an integral factor it's also called the leading coefficient and when your leading coefficient in a quadratic function is negative, your parabola is going to open downward. So where does this graph intercept the x-axis? It intercepts the x-axis at negative 2, 0. And where is the vertex? It's also at negative 2, 0. And that vertex is an absolute maximum value an absolute maximum value. It's the highest point. There are no other higher y values. So this is a new type of graph. The original equation, once again, negative 1x squared minus 4x minus 4. Notice that we took out that negative 1 
first. <laughs>